Um, if you have not seen the agenda, the topic is advanced data modeling in DynamoDB. Um, so, uh, before going into this, I just want to quick do a quick check here. How many of you here have uh, heard of NoSQL or have done NoSQL? Show of hands. Great, great, great. How many of you here have no DynamoDB or tried DynamoDB? Okay, wow. That's great. Uh, that I, I could see a lot of people have used DynamoDB. Uh, I hope you find the session useful, and if not as well, this session would... Uh, I encourage you to look more into NoSQL and do NoSQL the right way. Before we get into, I want to ask this quiz, not quiz, like it's a small joke. Four people walk into a NoSQL restaurant, but immediately leave. Why? Who who said that? How how did you know? <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, it's right. Uh, NoSQL means uh, most of the NoSQL doesn't have table or traditional SQL table, right? So they leave before because there are no tables. And uh, uh, this is about me. Uh, I am Bhuvna, engineering manager at Accenture, and uh, blah, 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 skills and all that. Obviously, I have to put NoSQL. Uh, and uh, I'm a volunteer at a couple of user groups. And uh, I also speak. I run a small children's library. And I'm a great animation movie fan. If you have seen Kufa Panda, Soul, I highly recommend if you have not. And my favorite quote is, just keep swimming. It's from Finding Nemo. Any Finding Nemo? Wow, great. <laughs> Most of the times when I say animation movies, I see very rarely see hands up, but nice. Great. We'll get into the agenda. You're going to see what is DynamoDB, why you have to use DynamoDB, how you have to use DynamoDB. So this is all not in the same format, but you would get out of this session. Computers are useless. They can only give you answers. You have to ask the questions. As humans, we have to ask the right questions to get the answers, because computer has all this. This is one of my favorite quotes. Today, we are going to ask a lot of right questions to get answers. DynamoDB is a NoSQL key value data store. So what is NoSQL key value data store? Uh, my, in my introduction, I showed you in a format. What is that format? In my introduction, JSON. Great. You know JSON, right? So DynamoDB, there are NoSQLs with other formats as well. DynamoDB stores the, val uh, stores the data in the JSON format. For it to store the data in the JSON format, you also have to give a key. Key you can imagine like in SQL you have primary keys, right? So that is the key and the value is a JSON document. In traditional SQL it will be table and tables are stored together. Here it is stored as a JSON document and uh, it will be pointed to a key. So you can imagine map, JSON, key value pair, all that. That's how DynamoDB stores the data internally. And DynamoDB gives you a predictable single digit millisecond. Millisecond itself is like one thousandth of a second. Single digit millisecond response time at any scale. How? How is it able to do? So as I said, I have put it in a table format for you to kind of associate with NoSQL, but it's all saved in a JSON format. But I, the key part which we saw, right, key value, key part is the main thing here. Key, uh, the, we would call it as partition key, primary key interchangeably, but mainly it's the partition key. So whenever you store, store a data, you have to give a partition key. That's that's uh, that is there. You have to give a partition key. So based on the partition key, DynamoDB would choose to put in a same storage node or different storage nodes. So when it when there are multiple partitions or storage nodes internally, so you have this huge data center. There are multiple uh, CPUs, RAMs, and all that, and different different storage nodes are there. And each of these storage nodes have 10 GB maximum. It can be of only 10 GB. And uh, say you st uh, store a data of user ID 1, it will go into partition 1. User ID 2 may go into partition 1 or partition 2, that doesn't matter. When you request for user 1 details, it will go to the request router. Request router will know where user 1 details are stored. It will directly go to that particular storage node and get you the results. And you have 1 terabyte, 10 terabytes, petabytes of data, it doesn't matter. Whenever you are going to query, it's going to get you the results only from that particular storage node, which is a maximum of 10 GB of data. So whatever you have, like millions of rows, millions of items, that doesn't matter. Whenever you query, it's going to fetch it only from maximum 10 GB of data. That's just, that is how they are going to, that is how they are promising that they are able to give single digit millisecond performance at any scale. 
In SQL, traditionally, if you have done joins and all that, you know how it's going to throttle as the data size increases. While in DynamoDB, it is going to give a consistent performance. Don't take my word. This is uh, from uh, 2023 Prime Day sale. Prime uh, AWS uses DynamoDB for their internal Amazon site as well. And it gave single digit millisecond response at 126 million requests per second. Imagine 126 million requests, and it gave single digit millisecond, not single, single digit second, single digit millisecond. So that is what, right? Next, DynamoDB is serverless. What is serverless? You can do whatever you want. So uh, you need not worry about bringing up the instance. You need not worry about CPU, RAM, memory, storage, nothing. You just have to use it. It is fully managed for you. You need not worry about the hardware upgrade or operating system upgrade, nothing. Infinitely scalable, you can put whatever you want inside, how many ever you want inside. DynamoDB will take care. That's when you have to ask pricing. Whatever you do in cloud, you have to ask pricing, or else, as Ashwin was saying, right, you will burn down the company. Um, so DynamoDB is operation-based pricing. Because you are going, you are not going to manage CPU and all like a traditional DB. You would have to when you do RDS, you know, right? You have to check the price of CPU, RAM, IOPS, and all. While uh, DynamoDB is serverless, so pay per use. You would use only for what you would pay only for what you use. So you would pay only for read and writes. Because in traditional DB, what you do? My data insert, data update, data read, select, and all that, right? You are going to pay only for that. In DynamoDB terms, that rupees is called RCU and WCU. Re RCU is read capacity units, WCU is write capacity units. The how much ever write you do, you're going to pay in WCU. There are some calculations which is outside of this topic, but you can see that. But uh, you have to know this is how you're going to pay. So if you are not doing a proper select, then if your select is going to fetch you a lot of data which you don't need, then you're going to anyway pay for that in RCU. If you are writing, uh, you are creating multiple indexes, multiple replication. For each and every replication you are writing, you are paying in WCU. That's why you need to know pricing. As engineers, we need to know pricing. That's when we can uh, model or we can create uh, database, access database in an efficient manner. So that's why. Why are we discussing architecture in data modeling workshop, data modeling, model, data modeling session? To model the data that exploits this architecture to get consistent, predictable, single-digit millisecond response time from DynamoDB. If you, are, if you don't know this, but still ask why I am not getting single-digit milliseconds, I am using DynamoDB, why is it not giving? Then if you don't know this, then it is not going to give you, you are not going to exploit that architecture for what you need. We will slowly get into DynamoDB details. DynamoDB, uh, it is called as stable. In Mongo, you would call it as collection, Cosmos, it's different. While in DynamoDB, you would call it as stable. And you have items like SQL rows, user 1, user 2, user 3, all those are items or SQL rows. You have a primary key that we saw. We will little bit see what is primary key, partition key, and all that. Attributes, whatever the value it is storing as a JSON document, right? You can put whatever you want. In one user, you can write name. In another user, you can write first name, last name. Any way you want, you can have any number of attributes. We'll see that with a quick example where imagine a table employee, primary key would be maybe like login alias, it should be unique. Only then it can go to the right storage node and fetch you results. So it should be unique. And these are the attributes. You can store whatever you want uh, in this attribute because it's storing as a JSON document. It's not like in SQL, it's going to tell you this table, this column value is not there. This column value is mandatory. That is all handled in your application logic. DynamoDB would let you say store whatever you want because all these are getting stored as a JSON document. I have put in this format. This is an OSQL visualizer by Amazon. Sorry, by AWS. You can use this to visualize. But internally, this is stored as a each and every. This is stored as a JSON. First name colon John. All these as JSON. So you can store whatever you want. Primary key. Primary key. Whatever we saw in the previous example. That's the partition key. Based on login alias, it's going to partition and send you send your data to different storage nodes. You can also have composite primary key. Composite primary key is when you have partition with sort key. So in this case, in the first case, partition key should be unique. In the second case, the combination should be unique. Partition key with sort key should be unique. Let's take an example of user orders, right? When you are storing user orders in a table, the partition key would be user ID. Sort key could be order ID. 
So one user can have multiple orders. So partition key can be like, can will be a duplicate, while sort key would be order ID. So you can say, get me all the orders of this particular user in a descending order, and give me like top three orders of this user. Such kind of things. So partition key is for grouping. Here I'm grouping the orders based on user ID. So user ID is a partition key, and I'm sorting the orders. So order ID would be my sort key. So uh, whenever you are descending dynamo meet, keep this in mind. Partition key is for grouping because whatever data for the same partition is going to part for the same partition key is going to get stored in the same storage node. The first diagram you remember, right? We had multiple partitions, so all that is going to be the same partition, same storage node physically. So partition key is for grouping, sort key is for ordering. Sort key you can do lot of things. You can say, uh, get me all the orders where the order ID is greater than ten. Such kind of lot of operations you can do with sort key. We'll see that with the example. Choosing primary key or partition key is the most, one of the most important things you have to do it in DynamoDB. If you are not choosing a proper, uh, imagine you are doing uh, category as your prime partition key. Sort key is something else. Uh, if the category is a partition key, most of the times categories will have uh, preferences, right? Some category will have a lot of products, while some category will have less. So you are totally, ex totally, uh, some partitions would grow more than it demands. Like 10 GB, it would grow and it will have two partitions. Then your uh, request router should go to both the partitions, fetch your results. So part, when you choose a primary key, make sure it is very much distributed. Like user ID or login alias or don't do on names, right? Because names are, there are some names which are quite popular than some are not. So choose, which, choose a primary key that is very distributed. So for that, we will see like mainly two read operations in DynamoDB. One is query, one is scan. Query is the first thing that we did with O of one complexity where when a request comes in, you are asking, fetch me the details of user ID one. So it will know immediately to which partition to go, fetch you the details, giving you single digit millisecond response. Scan is you are saying, fetch me all the users whose name starts with A. It would have to, it would have to check all the partitions that are used for this particular table and fetch you the results. So it's scanning. If you have one TB of data, it is going to scan one TB of data, fetch you results. While in query, it's directly going to go to that 10 GB and give you results in single digit millisecond. You get the difference, right? Scan is total DB scan, while query is going to that particular partition and fetching you results. So keep the whatever your query or whatever operation you are doing maximum, let it be a query. Scan you would have to do, obviously there are cases we would have to do, but keep it very minimal because the RCU and WC again, RCU will be very much higher because it has to read all the partitions, while that RCU will be very, very minimal because it's going to only single partition. Let's see this with an example. Uh, example is that we want to build a blogging application like Instagram, okay, where you can post, you can save some drafts, and also you are getting notifications. So. Uh, in this particular small application. So in this application, if you want to do in SQL, what's the first thing you do? ER diagram, entity relationship, right? So we would go and say, I would put a table for user, table for post, and post status for published or draft post, and I will have notifications, notifications table. Is this okay with all? Great. How much time has passed? I can go a little bit slower. Uh, so, schema for DynamoDB. So, how would you put it in DynamoDB? DynamoDB, we have tables. So, how many tables we would need? Previous slide we saw, right? How many tables we would need? Four. Correct? So, when you put it in uh, DynamoDB, the schema, you would need four. So, relation schema or uh, no SQL schema, what's the difference, right? They are the same. There is no difference. You would put four table and then you will get the results, right? One table, you would put it in one table. Don't make my life easy. I have to tell you, I have to convince you that it should be in one table. <laughs> okay, let's see. So in DynamoDB, you have to, when you design or do data modeling for DynamoDB, you need a very different mindset. How many of you have done SQL here? SQL, SQL people? Please, please erase whatever you have in mind. Please forget denormalization, like normalization, all that. Okay? Because whatever I'm gonna tell you for the next 10, 15 minutes, yeah, because even I'm from SQL background, so when I saw that, I was like, what are you even doing? Why are you doing all this? So it took me some time to first adjust to that mindset. 
but once you know that it's it's a very different experience so uh, it needs a very different mindset be ready to accept that let's ask dynamodb documentation itself how are you going to do how where what are the points we need to keep in mind when you do this don't read everything just read whatever is highlighted right questions first you need to know what questions your db need to answer the first thing computer have all the answers you need to ask right questions so how are you going to access your data that is the main thing first you need to know if you are going to use dynamodb second maintain as few tables as possible why would you have to do that yes okay i'll come to that okay um maintain as few tables as possible we'll see how that is going to help us so first thing questions it will need to answer so what are the questions it needs to answer so to know how how you are going to access your data you need to know your business use case so for our business use case for our blogging application we know we have to first decide what are the operations we are going to do so you need to first understand your business use case operations can be read operation and write operation right so write operation is create a user we have to create a user whenever someone log uh, registers create a user create a post update a post update a post when there is a draft post you would have to publish it and you have to like a post and create a notification mark notification are the common uh, like are the operations that i'm going to do and then importantly we'll come to read operation for this uh, presentation so read is get user profile as soon as user logs in we have to get the user profile show username last name and all that then we have to show all the posts that user has written get all the published posts so that we can show it on the user's timeline get all the drafts for the drafts of posts of the user sort the posts by likes so that we can show it in the top 3 posts of this user get all notifications for the user get unread notification of the user okay this these are my operations i am going to do it on dynamodb this is very different when you are when you go to a sql you are not thinking about operations you are thinking about entities if you are going to create a banking application create user bank details account details that's how you would think in sql mindset while when you come to no sql or dynamodb no sql in general itself you have to think in a very different way how i am going to access this data that's how i'm going to store it so this is how i'm going to, this is the read operation these are the write operations and with with this we will slowly start data modeling for each and every operation so first thing why do no sql developers eat lunch alone i don't know because they don't know how to join table you should not join table you cannot join table in dynamodb there are people who come and ask me i created two dynamodb tables now join me and give me results aws will, will itself will say cheapo you can't do that because they won't do it do it because the main reason why sql can't scale is that you have to support joins right you have to, to support joins you have to keep everything in a single storage only then you can join and give if different tables are in different storage nodes how can you join you think you have to get all the table join and give you it will be you can't scale at all that's the problem of sql that's why people are moving to no sql to vertically vertically like to scale and give you high performance so again in sql you are coming and asking i'm go i will do aggregate only i will do join only then it's not going to work it, it might they, they can make it work but it won't be performant and in da, in dynamodb why specifically they are saying they will not even support join is that the when you create a dynamodb table the same table in that partition we say, saw earlier right the same partition will hold the data of aws amazon itself and if you are joining table that partition goes down amazon.com will go down you get it right all these details this is serverless it's not giving you a dedicated software for you it's not going to do that in the same partition there will be multiple customer data so if you do some operation which is going to get take lot of time it is going to affect other customers as well that's why they have said we are giving you high performance you do operations that will give you high performance you don't do operations that will be slower so you can't join tables so the first point if you have four tables you can't join and say get me all the post of user that's not going to work so we are going to do it in single table whatever we saw that four right we are going to do in single table let's see how okay first one get user profile uh stay with me for some time this is the table i'm going to create you can name this table whatever you want based on your application name whatever so this table will have partition key as user id why i chose user id user id is widely distributed whatever operations you are going to do it's based on user id get post of a user get notifications of a user get 
profile of a user. So it's all user ID based. So I'm going to choose user ID as my partition key. And sort key, I have chosen as, I've kept as SK. Stay with me for some time. This might be confusing. But sort key I have kept and sort key is profile. So how I will access this? I will say, get me the details of user ID of user 1 and with, profile, with sort key as profile. That will give me user 1's profile details. Name, age, whatever you want to store. You can store whatever you want in this attribute because all these attributes will be saved in what format? JSON. In JSON, you can put whatever you want. So whatever details you want, you can put. But these two are the main things, user ID and sort key. So for this, for the first operation, I'm going to do user ID, user ID 1, sort key as profile. It will give me user's profile details. So first operation is done. Second, get all the posts of the user. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to say same partition key because profile post will also have same partition key user 1. In the sort key, I'm putting as post ash 1. Usually post should have an ID, right? Obviously every entity should have an ID. Post will have an ID. So in, before I add that ID in the sort key, I am prefixing it with post ash. Now how I get all the posts of a user? I'll say user, user ID is user 1 and sort key that begins with post ash. Now this will give me all the posts of user 1. Got it? Are you with me? Again, don't tell value will not have name and all. Because it's a JSON, you can put whatever you want. Profile will have name, post will have title, message and all. So, you can store whatever you want in the attribute. The main thing, partition key, sort key, sort key I put as post dash. You are with me? Good? Don't cringe like SQL developers, I can already see them. What What are you even doing here? But that's, that's how it is in DynamoDB. With this, you, yeah, you think all these are in the same partition same storage node, again single digit millisecond. You get it? Because it's all in the same, it's, it's gonna give you in a very quick time. Third, get all published posts for a user. So I'm going to use a filter here. The same query, after it fetches all the posts of a user, I'm going to apply a filter on top of it. So if there are 1,000 published posts, 1,000 uh, posts and uh, it'll have uh, five more minutes. Difficult only, okay. Um, so, uh, get all the posts and after fetching everything, it will filter and give me only the published posts. This is one more layer of filtering on top of it. So I have published and draft. Now get all draft posts, same, right? You can apply a filter. Now the problem here again is a user can have any number of published posts. The business use case says a user can have maximum five draft posts, not more than that. In that case, what are you doing is I am fetching the entire 1000 posts in which 995 is published, which I'm not gonna use. I'm using only five draft posts. To fetch five, I'm fetching the thousand posts, filtering it and giving back five. So you are paying in WCU. To fetch five, you are paying thousand units, which is not needed. So how can we solve this? You can create an index. You can create an index saying user ID and post status. So when you create an index, it will create a replica of your table in DynamoDB. There will be a complete replica in which it is sorted in status. So this will give you a separate partition and it will be sorted by status and you will get an immediate response. But again, creating index also you have to think if you really need it because you are going to pay in WCU again. It has to write for index once, it has to write in your table once. So we will see another operation and see how we can refine it. The fifth is sort the post based on likes. So, so to sort the post based on likes again, you can create another index. User ID comma number of likes so that you can say get query partition key is user, user ID one. And the number of likes, create, uh, sort it based on number of likes because number of likes is sort key in this index. So you can easily sort it. Now there are three, in, uh, already you have two indexes. So your WCE cost is increasing. How we can solve this is, one of the solutions in this case is for draft post, put number of likes as minus one and create only one index, not user ID status index, user ID number of likes index. So in this case, what will happen is that you will have an index where the sort key is number of likes and you, you would, to get the draft post, you will not check on status, you will check on number of likes. You will say for user ID one, get me all the, uh, uh, so get me all the sort key which has minus one. This will give you all the draft post. And for number of likes, you can easily do a sort key, right? Sort based on number of likes, which are greater than 
minus 1 will give you published post with in sorted in the way of number of likes. So this is how you can refine. You can, yeah, now we have reduced one, one of the indexes, right? Next, get all notifications. How will you store notifications? Any, any guesses? How, how are we storing, going to store notifications in this? How, how did we store post? Post hash we did, pre prefix we did, right? Same. Notification, notification hash. Now to fetch notification, all you have to say is, for this user ID, give me all the sort key that begins with notification hash. Now it's going to give you all the notifications of the user. Again, this is all in the same partition, single digit millisecond response. So this is how I'm going to store the notifications. Get unread notification for the user. You can say like I can create an index that will say user ID comma notification red status so that it will give you user ID with the red status, notification red status as false would give you all the unread notifications. In any point in time, uh, will unread be greater or red, red notification will be greater? Red notification will be greater than unread notification, right? Usually we'll have very less red notification. So in that case, you are indexing all the notifications only to fetch very less number of unread notification. How can we solve this again? So what I'm gonna do is, once the user reads a notification, I'm going to mark it as, I'm going to delete this attribute of user is red. That is this user red status, right? So by default, user red status will be false. Notification will not be red, so user red status will be false. What I'm gonna do is, once the user reads it, instead of marking it as true, I'm deleting that attribute. You get it? This we will not do in SQL, but this is possible in DynamoDB. That's how you have to know the architecture to make use of. Now if I delete this attribute, when I create an index on top of that attribute, it will only index the rows that have this attribute. It is not indexing red. Can you see that the index size itself is very less. You are going to pay very less in WC and RC. So it will, it will index only the unread, giving the performance much more faster, bringing the cost much more down. You get this? This is called sparse index. It will, in, because in this index, ideally when you index in SQL, all the data of this table is in, uh, duplicated. But now, you don't see post getting duplicated. You don't see profile getting duplicated. You are only seeing unread index getting duplicated. This is the sparse index. Make use of that. So now we have brought in everything in the single table itself. That's like achieving what is possible. That's it. Ending with best practice, whatever we said. Identify your application access pattern, understand your business use case, understand single table design. Uh, avoid hotkeys. Hotkeys is choosing a very common primary key, category as primary key. Avoid full table scans. It will come, it will burn down your company. Keep the sizes of index as small as possible. Keep the number of index to minimum because again you are going to pay in WCU. One takeaway I would say if you are going to take away this presentation, this is one not only for DynamoDB, for any NoSQL you do, Data that is accessed together should be stored together. If not, you'll be doing joins. MongoDB allows aggregate, but if you do aggregate only, then you know in PSR, in performance test, you know how it's gonna cost you. So whenever you have a data that is accessed together, user orders, users and orders are accessed together, so they should be together. So it's not data that is related together, data that is accessed together. So in any NoSQL you do, data that is accessed together should be stored together. So what you should do now? Should you use relational or NoSQL? SQL or NoSQL? What? It, it, it is based on your use case. I'll just give you a quick example. This one I saw on LinkedIn some other day and it really pissed me off. Uh, they compared like NoSQL as, you can store whatever you want, so it's like this. But I would argue and say like this. SQL is like, get uh, now your business use case is making breakfast. So SQL is getting all the groceries and stocking up. And NoSQL is getting the cereals and stocking up. To make breakfast, which is the faster one? To make breakfast, which is faster? No SQL is faster. Now your business use case is changing. They are asking, I want to do lunch and dinner. So which is possible? Can this support lunch and dinner? No SQL can't support. That's where a lot of companies, they are asking no SQL to support lunch and dinner. How can it support, right? You have a clear use case in mind, business use case. Go for no SQL. If you don't have clear business use case, you know I'm, I don't even know what my business is going to do. I just need a DB, go for SQL, kind of like that. Uh, ending with this, for a fast selection, everybody take the same exam, please climb the tree. If you don't know what you are going to do, if you are like using no SQL or NoSQL interchangeably without knowing what you need, then you are going to train the fish to climb the tree. 
And with that, that's a wrap for my session. Thank you so much. You have been a very kind audience. Thank you. Thank you, Bhuvaneshwari. Thank you. Thank you for such an insightful yet so much fun-filled session. So to have